our sun can sometimes get angry and blast our planet with billions of tons of hot ionized plasma. It's called a coronal mass ejection, or CME. In 1998, an enormous CME impacted the Earth and caused a satellite to go down over the middle of the United States that happened to be carrying pager signals for almost everyone in the United States. As a result, doctors and nurses didn't get pages about their patients. Anybody who was expecting a page didn't get it, and that had a real impact on our society. Similarly, the airlines flying over the poles, they can lose communications, and that's not legal for them to be flying in a situation where they're not in communication with the ground. But uh, probably uh, something that's more important to passengers, and as, as human beings, you worry about radiation exposure and so on, and especially pilots who have to fly these aircraft over the pole. One flight over the pole could be the equivalent of, say, 100 chest x-rays. Large electrical utility systems can get hit with huge power surges. Especially long grids at high latitudes that go north-south can actually pick up a lot of extra current in them, and power companies are very aware of this. The long steel pipelines are at risk. To understand why, think about this. This is a power supply, an inverting transformer. This one happens to be from my computer. You probably have hundreds of devices like this in your life, either seen or unseen inside of other electrical gear. High voltage, like the sun, comes in this side and through the magic of magnetic fields is induced to flow across to the other side where a low voltage current, like the Earth, is produced. The problem is no human engineer wrote the specifications. No underwriter's laboratories verified the safety of the giant inductor that surrounds the entire planet Earth. When one of these CMEs impacts the Earth's magnetic field, it causes the leading edge of our magnetic field to recoil toward the planet. That in turn changes the magnetic field near the surface of the planet and induces electric currents in anything that can conduct electricity. If it happens over a large power grid, the power grid carries a large DC current. There was an example in March of 1989 where Hydro-Quebec lost power. Millions of people lost power for almost 10 hours, I believe. And it was attributed to a major geomagnetic storm. These can be very serious problems for modern technology, especially in the northern latitudes. And the sun is capable of a whole lot worse than anyone now alive has ever seen. On September 1st of 1859, conditions on the sun and in the magnetic field of Earth came together to create a nearly perfect solar storm. When the solar flare went off, the uh, intensity of the sunlight doubled. So a com anybody walking on the street would have noticed this. 17 hours later, aurorae were seen as far south as Hawaii, Havana, and Hong Kong. The aurora borealis created very intense currents that flowed in the ionosphere, and these currents uh, induce currents on the surface of the Earth. Telegraph stations across Europe and America caught fire. Several buildings burned to the ground. People uh, received uh, shocks associated with uh, touching conductors at that time. And the impacts of that event a century and a half ago may only be a fraction of what the sun can really do. Our technology is much more advanced now than in 1859, but at the same time, our technology is more vulnerable to a storm of this magnitude. One thing that can happen is the radiation belt intensification can cause damage to spacecraft. So communications would be blacked out. One can only envision uh, what might happen if the 1859 event occurred today.